The day starts with loons calling across the lake, mournful, then in that hysterical yodeling which sounds, frankly, loony. I don't bother packing quickly since the sky is clear and I feel no pressure to move. But I'm out before the boys, one of which wandered into my camp accidentally after using the outhouse, apologetic and embarrassed as he shined his light directly into my tent. And then there's the father and son on the other side, who I walked in on as they were changing clothes. Fortunately for all of us, strategically placed overgrown ferns hid any private bits. You're listening to The P-Rag, Unfiltered Adventures of the Blissful Hiker. I'm Allison Young, The Blissful Hiker, sometime professional flutist, sometime voice artist, and full-time pedestrian. And like the small backpacking essential of the same name, The P-Rag shares the unglamorous but vital truth about empowerment as badass people who really don't need permission to blaze our own trails in this journey we call life. Thanks so much to Lecky Trekking Poles for supporting the P-Rag podcast. If you want to be a blissful hiker, Lecky's should be in your hands. And also Belega, makers of the best blister-resist, non-slouching, foot-massaging socks for the long haul. Keep listening for a way for you to win three pairs of Belega socks. Right now I'm in the middle of Isle Royale crossing in a kind of through-hike of my own devising. This morning I woke up next to Lake Dazor, and I head straight back into the woods. They're dense and dark, layered with tall, straight trunks. All I can think of right now are the knights who say, Ni! from Monty Python. No one is here in my green tunnel except a bull moose quietly eating 20 feet off the path. His head follows me as I pass, but he never takes a step. I look at him and say, Ni, and his ears quiver. I come to an open area of rock and climb to the top with views of Superior and in front the jigsaw shape of Lake Dazor, where I happily swam twice. Back into the forest I go, up and down through mud and over planks, There are fewer mushrooms here, and no berries at all, as I simply move forward, thinking to myself, this must be a lot like the Appalachian Trail. The ranger in Windigo warned me about Ishmeming Point, a kind of island joke. The tower sits above the trail, about a story and a half, with trees towering above it. I don't bother climbing the stairs for a better look, and take a pass on the left-behind mattress and T-shirt. I walk over bare rock with obstructed views to water beyond, but mostly clouds building, then clearing. The wind is up and refreshing. Walking on and on, it's mostly easy until a muddy patch slows me down. Finally, views open to a magnificent inland lake, the big lake beyond. Two men are coming up and tell me they swam in Todd Harbor and someone was using the one shelter as a base from their boat. That's okay with me. I don't really need a shelter. It's such a lovely day. I just always hope to find a super campsite, so I press on, walking steeply down now to the north side of the island and another inland lake. Soon I come to a beaver dam holding back a pond above me with a crossing below on one rickety board, the other board at the end submerged. I was warned about this, and I carefully cross on that one board, knowing it will hold me. But of course, I mean, is it human nature or is it just me? I just have to test the other board, and I sink right in, my shoes suddenly full of murky water. Serves you right, Ms. Curiosity. But this area is lovely and open, mostly huge birch trees with thick trunks or thin tall ones high into the bluebird sky, and the vegetation is drier, with more autumn reds and yellows. The trail undulates up and down, over a washout before reaching an area marked by pink ribbons. It's another beaver dam, a new one. And these beavers were busy. 
I can't imagine how they constructed this marvel, one long enough to stop a river and flood a small forest. The ribbons take me on top of it, logs packed tight with mud, and finally let me out on the Nong Ridge. Going east is open, but the other rugged 20 miles is closed for safety. I'm clearly on the easy part and quickly arrive at the harbor, a couple coming up assuring me I should camp at the first spot, but I like to explore first, so I leave my pack to see what else is available. I then take a wrong turn and start hiking the trail I'll walk tomorrow. Not a bad thing, though, since I run into a man who just got off a fishing boat, and I ask him the obligatory, do you happen to have a beer I can buy? He says no, but he has one he can give me. Hooray! Four guys and a boat. One just returning to brag about the best shit he's ever taken. They also invite me for dinner tonight when they return with today's catch. But first I tell them I need to find the group sites. He sets me on the right path, and I land on fabulous Site 1. Wow, it's superb, a view of outer islands with Sleeping Giant and other cliffs in Canada behind. I literally snag the best sight seconds before two other hikers walk up. What a place it is. A private rocky beach to climb down to on cedar roots and soak my feet and filter water, plus myriad mossy cliffs to park myself and read my book all afternoon. Mergansers swim past, their heads bent over in the water. They suddenly speed along, beaks agape, scooping up fish. A black spider with long, dainty legs pulls herself expertly along a filament upside down, then disappears into a tree. The waves burble and hoot like an organ pipe against the rocks. The sunset is bright pink before covered in cloud, turning the water a silver blue. Thunderstorms are expected tonight, and boy, I hope I chose my tent spot well. <laughs> More people arrive, three couples in all, one bringing foraged chanterelles. We talk and laugh, drink, eat, and some pass a pipe around the fire. One couple lost their water filter, and boat owner Andy loans them his. Another lost his tent, and Andy suggests, hey, sleep under his tarp. His friend Jake brought a smoker and makes the most tender beef I've tasted in a long time. They all ensure I'm okay and tell me to ask for anything if I need it. Well, I may be a little bit badass, but it turns out I came down here without my light. So Frank gives me his for the night to get back to the alley coop. The air is finally dry and cool, the waves blooping against the rocks. I'm well fed by my generous and kind trail angels, and I'm feeling in my little cocoon beyond good. You're listening to The P-Rag, Unfiltered Adventures of the Blissful Hiker. Through sharing my stories of walking long-distance trails as a solo, middle-aged female hiker, I want to empower you to learn to hike your own hike, too. And I do ask, if you're enjoying the storytelling, to consider subscribing to The P-Rag wherever you get your podcasts. And if you listen on Apple, I so appreciate all of you who have taken the time to leave a review. That's really the best way for others to find the podcast. And let me tell you what Belega Socks and I have cooked up. Belega will share three pairs of socks with the writer of the best review of the P-Rag. So here's how it works. Subscribe and write a review at Apple Podcasts. Take a screenshot of your review and then tag at Blissful Hiker on Instagram. The very best reviewer chosen by the judges will win three pairs of Belega socks. So again, subscribe and write a review at Apple Podcasts. Take a screenshot and tag Blissful Hiker on Instagram. The deadline to enter is Monday, September 28th. Rolling thunder wakes me with flashes of light like so many strobes. I'm a little bit scared as the wind picks up and I wonder if the enormous birch behind my head with branches only at the top will stay standing. I wisely pop out of the alley coop to poop and pee before it rains. 
but no rain hits overnight, and it's only a sprinkle this morning. So I pack up and get started on the short walk to a bay with shelters. I liberate three spiders with bulbous bodies and stringy legs who spent the night huddled under my pack's lid. A slender black fox with a bushy striped tail visits for handouts. The trail once again heads up through dense woods. My rain pants protect me from the wet overgrowth. I catch glimpses of small islands off this main island, all uninhabited except for their native creatures. The rain stops and I walk straight into a refreshing wind. And I think about the pipe passed around last night. I mean, we are in a pandemic. I didn't really think I wanted to share it last night. And I'm not really against smoking per se, but like headphones on the trail, I don't see a need to alter my mental state while hiking. And I prefer to be completely alert and in tune with my surroundings. Right now, my surroundings are threatening and expectant. I hear thunder to the north and to the south, growling like a warning. It's so dark when I walk through the forest, I can barely see where to put my feet to avoid the mud. But I feel pretty good, and it's not far walking today, just shy of seven miles. The sky suddenly lights up. One, two, three, four. Surely I'm safe from being hit. But usually rain follows lightning, and on cue it begins raining hard. And I stop to put on my raincoat and cinch the hood. It's not really cold, and I feel safe and swaddled in my cocoon as I push on, up on exposed lichen-covered rock, small lakes below. It is a long way on this exposed ridge, and I'm happy not to have lightning as I move along quickly, using my sticks to negotiate the steep downs. Finally, I'm going down for good, just as the heavens really open up and it pours. I see a sign for the Manong Mine, the oldest in the United States, a copper mine used for at least 4,000 years by Native Americans. <laughs> this is hardly the time for a visit, so I skip it sloshing my way towards the cove and hopefully a free shelter. It's always such a strange moment as you get closer to where you're going to stay. There's never any knowing for sure what awaits a hiker at the end of the trail. I'm absolutely sodden, and I'm hoping for a place to spread out. But I tell myself I will be fine in my tent if need be, to hope for the best and be open to it while planning for the worst. The campsite at McCargo Cove is deserted, so I walk right over to the best shelter, Shelter 4, as recommended. I can't possibly express how welcome this structure is in a rainstorm. But before I spread every last thing out on the wooden floor and hang my things, I do head to the water in my rain gear to filter two liters. And this moment alone here on the rock, one lone seagull sitting on the dock is magical. It's quiet and mysterious. The long, thin bay reaching out into the mist, its entrance from Lake Superior obscured. I haul my water back up and make lunch. Someone left a can of tuna in oil. And the guys last night gave me a beer for the road. The sky is gray, but it's getting lighter. Thunder rumbles in the distance. Graffiti on the walls of my shelter tells a good story, especially what it must be like in a more usual summer. One hiker takes the time to carve kill boaters who race into harbor to claim all the shelters. Another wonders if a person has the ability to keep their voice and their laugh to a low bellow. Soon, other hikers arrive, and they claim all the shelters. The two from last night, one who lost his tent, end up sharing a shelter with a single guy. The rain starts up again, but it doesn't last long, and I head back down to the dock. Black bugs flutter above the water, the reflection a perfect dance partner. Water bugs with legs like oars pull forward, then let the current drag them back. 
A loon sounds its mournful call as a fish jumps. A large snail slowly makes progress along an algae-covered rock, and light raindrops create rings on the placid water. Four hikers wade into the ice-cold water as a boat slowly makes its way towards us, slow as to cause no wake and disturb the loons. But it's moving so slow, we can't figure out what kind of boat it is. It's black, it's big. Is it the ranger? No, it's a dive boat with dozens of tanks and compressors. Yeah, like if you look at map IRL, uh -huh. it's right after Camus Point. Okay. Six so, men jump off good. and unload their gear on the dock to clean it, then refill their tanks for the next dive. This is serious business. It's technical diving down to 250 feet in the icy water of Lake Superior. Oxygen, they tell me, doesn't work at these depths. So the men breathe a mixture helium. of helium. Yes. Do you have funny voices when you come yeah. up? Yes. Yeah. Of course, I have to ask if that makes their voices sound funny. And indeed, it does. When you're a deputy, we kind of talk to each other, and you sound like yeah. Donald Duck or maybe. Yeah. 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 What really catches my attention as we talk is this mantra, three strikes, you're out. If three things go wrong, even minor things, they decide to stay on the surface. It reminds me of Richard's feelings the day we kayaked near Grand Portage. We launched in the wrong place, we forgot our lunch, and he brought the wrong hat. They bothered him, and they added up in his mind to say this particular day was not our day. Just then the rain starts up again, and I start to shiver, mostly thinking about what he said. Expectation and driving towards a goal is good up to a point. Even in the lower risk world of hiking, being able to know when to stop or when to change plans is extremely important. Being flexible and allowing the day to unfold brings possibility. When hanging on tightly can, at best, make one unsatisfied or, at worst, be in danger. It's quiet now, back in my shelter, except for crickets and beaver tails splashing cannonball warnings. Tomorrow's supposed to be sunny again, and I've been given suggestions on the very best site to take. But I'm going to practice what I preach and let tomorrow take care of tomorrow. Thanks to Lecky Trekking Poles for supporting the P-Rag podcast. If you want to be a blissful hiker, Lecky's should be in your hands. Also, Belega, the best blister-resist, non-slouching, foot-massaging socks for the long haul. Belega Socks and the P-Rag have teamed up for a contest. Belega will share three pairs of socks with the writer of the best review of the P-Rag. So to enter... Go to the PRAG at Apple Podcasts and write a review. You can take a screenshot of your review and then post it and tag me, Blissful Hiker, on Facebook or Instagram. Check it out and find out more details at my website, blissfulhiker.com. And the deadline to enter is Monday, September 28th. The music that you're hearing in this episode is by my friend, composer Eric McIntyre. It's called Surveyors. Eagle Flies Away. Eric was an artist in residence at Isle Royale, and like me, he's entranced by the natural sounds and using them as a partner in his artistic work. I've put a link to Eric McIntyre's website in the show notes so you can listen to more. And of course, the show notes, more about my hikes all over the world, it's at the website blissfulhiker.com. Next week, I'll conclude my hiking on Isle Royale. And let's just say that otters and leeches play a starring role. Until then, my friends, happy trails. Happy trails.